the registered dietitian with the bariatric program up the road. I'm also a diabetes educator, um, and a couple times a year they ask me to do a lecture. So today we're doing decoding the nutrition label. Does anyone find the label confusing? And I still do sometimes. Um, you know, my bariatric patients, um, I take a different approach to educating them on labels. We keep it really simple, but I'm sure you all being in healthcare probably already have a lot of pre-existing knowledge on this, but feel free to ask questions as we go, or I'll certainly stick around at the end if you have any questions, all right? So we'll dive right in. Make sure y'all sign in to get your healthy meals. I don't want to forget to say that. So uh, the nutrition labels came out in 1990, I believe it is. Um, not everything has a label, so you'll notice that fresh produce doesn't always have a label. Um, fresh seafood doesn't have a label usually. Alcohol doesn't. Thank goodness, because that would be depressing if wine had a label on it. Um, some of it does. <laughs> yes, yeah, some does. Yep, some some do. I should say. Um, so so not everything is mandated to have a label, but most things now. I mean, even a restaurant food doesn't, but usually you can find that information online. You can use sites like Calorie King or Calorie.about.com, or has anyone used MyFitnessPal? So you can find out what the nutrition information is. Um, probably eventually, restaurants will be required to have their nutrition information. I mean, fast food places like McDonald's, they have their calorie counts listed. They've actually studied that and shown that it doesn't necessarily influence people's choices. Um, I don't know if they're just not looking at it, or I guess if you just have in your mind that you want the Big Mac, you know, that's what you're going to splurge on that day. But we're going to talk um, at the end of the presentation, labels are going to be changing a little bit in 2018. I think it's going to be beneficial and hopefully help people make better choices. So studies have shown that people really don't understand the label. Like I said, you all are in healthcare, so you probably have a better knowledge than some of my patients do, but it's still a little confusing. So what are we looking at? Always have to start with the serving size. This is something that a lot of my patients don't realize. So almost everything is not that bad for us if you stick to the serving size. I mean, even cookies and ice cream and chips, but it's hard to stick to the serving size of that. So serving size is the recommended portion. And most packages, bottles, containers have multiple servings in them. So for this, it's half a cup, but the serving per container is four. So there's actually two cups in here. So if you eat the whole thing, you have to quadruple all these numbers. So it's actually 360 calories. If I'm doing my math right. 12 grams of fat. So that's something a lot of people don't realize. So it's important that you look at the serving size so you know exactly how much you're, you're eating. And as a general rule of thumb, you want to try and stick to a single serving or less. Calories are good to look at. I don't necessarily educate patients to count their calories. I like to educate on healthy eating, portion control. I think if you focus on that, your calories are kind of counted for you in a sense. Um, but you could use MyFitnessPal if you are you know, really actively trying to lose weight and want more structure. And, want to know exactly what you're intaking in a day. Fat should be limited. However, I think it's more important to look at the breakdown of fat, not necessarily the total fat. For example, avocados, nuts, olive oil, olives. They have fat, but they're healthy fats. They're um, monounsaturated or polyunsaturated fats. They still have a lot of calories, though, so even nuts. I mean, if you eat several handfuls of nuts a day, you're getting a lot of calories. So if you're trying to lose or maintain your weight, you know, that, that's definitely going to hinder that. Um, the saturated and the trans fats is what's not good, and we'll get to that in a minute, that just because something says there's not trans fat in it doesn't necessarily mean that it really is trans fat free uh, because they don't have to put it on the label unless it's more than half of a gram. So you have to look for the words hydrogenated when you're looking at the ingredients list. Um, so like peanut butters, regular peanut butters, not the naturals, but the um, regular peanut butter like Jif. It says no trans fat on the label, but if you look at the ingredients, it says partially hydrogenated vegetable oil. So there is a little bit of trans fat in there, and if you eat multiple servings, then you're getting more substantial amount of trans fat. Has anyone heard that egg yolks are okay for us now? <laughs> Which I've kind of thought that for a while, I'm sure most dietitians have. Um, it's more so the saturated trans fats that raise cholesterol, not necessarily cholesterol in food. So, um, I mean, some doctors actually are eating, still, still telling patients not to eat shrimp and lobster because they're high in cholesterol. Well, that doesn't necessarily raise our blood cholesterol levels. 
it's the saturated trans fats. Sodium is good to look at. I would consider 300 pretty high, you know, especially if you have high blood pressure or congestive heart failure or renal disease, you should be really limiting your sodium. So, you know, 200 or lower is good. You know, 140 or less is considered low sodium. So, you know, you definitely want to get no salt added, no sodium, you know, rinse things. Like if you have canned vegetables at home that already have, you know, sodium in them, you can rinse them to get some of it off. It won't get all of it off. How much um, do you say a, a day for sodium? Well, we're all supposed to do, is it 23 or 2400 milligrams a day? 23. Well, for, for like diabetes cases, and medical yeah, conditions, yeah. it's 1,500 or less. And, and some doctors might even put you on less than that. I think the average American consumes like 4,000 milligrams a day. So we're probably all getting more sodium than, than is recommended. So what's high sodium, 500 or more? Um, I would say, so low sodium is considered 140 milligrams or less. So I don't think there's actually a definition of what high sodium is. But I would consider when you start getting in a 300, it's high. That's why I asked for the whole day because you know you may not have it at one meal. Right, you can yeah, balance it's it like out. Total, yeah, so I think day. in general around like 2,300, it's either 23 or 2,400 milligrams a day. It is. Yeah, okay, perfect. But like I said, if you have medical conditions, then yes, it's usually 1,500. Um, so especially if you have diabetes, you should be looking at the total carbohydrates, the fibers, the sugars. The more fiber, the better, the less sugar, the better. My bariatric patients um, are on a very strict low sugar diet, so we actually recommend that they stick to three grams or less of sugar. I don't think that's realistic for the general population, but definitely single digits, with exception of natural sugars, like fruit. If you're gonna eat an apple, you're gonna get more than you know 10 grams of sugar. But um, one of the really great things about the labels changing in 2018, which we'll get to, is that they're gonna start um, drawing attention to the added sugars. So you're going to know exactly, is this a natural sugar or is it processed added sugar? So I think that's going to be super helpful. Um, vitamins and minerals, they give percent daily values, which I don't educate my patients on. It's a little confusing, but basically you can use it as a reference guide. So 5% or less is low, 20% or more is high. So really the only thing that this food is high in is vitamin A, it looks like. So they do this based on a 2,000 calorie diet, but you might need more or less <coughs> calories. So it's not always necessarily um, something you can you know, completely go by, but just use it as a reference. And actually some of those uh, requirements are gonna change on the 2018 table. Does anyone have questions about that? I mean, it's a lot. I think it's important to hone in on what you're looking for. So everyone should look at serving size, but if you have diabetes, you should really be focused on you know, the carbohydrates, the fibers, the sugars. If you have high blood pressure, you should be focused on the sodium. I'm just curious what food that is. You know what? Actually, we were talking about this this morning, and I don't really know. Okay. What was the question? What was the question? What is the food? Oh, what's this food? Yeah. Oh, you know. Maybe the, canned yeah, you corn know. or something? No, no corn at the higher in carbs. No, we have more carbs. That would be a good Not for ham and cup. Yeah, I'm not sure what it is. <laughs> That's a great know. question. We never know. We just yeah. know. It's it's fine. Fine. And honestly, it could just be arbitrary numbers. It's not necessarily well, true for true food. Yeah. Yeah. So let's just talk about some of the serving sizes so we can all be depressed at how small serving sizes are. So Ritz crackers, it's five crackers. So if you sit down to eat tuna, it's easy to eat half a sleeve. Well, if you eat 20 crackers, you have to multiply this by four. So you're getting, you know, 320 calories just from your crackers. That's not even taking into account your tuna salad. Um, sugary beverages are really tricky. There's usually more than one serving of sugary beverages. Bottles of soda, Gatorade. I think this is probably Powerade. Um, so there, there's two and a half servings in here. So you have to multiply that sugar by 2.5. 50 grams of sugar. That's like more sugar than we should have in a whole day. So you'll see on the 2018 label that that's going to... Um, it's gonna help us pay more attention to how many servings are in the bottle. Chips, my husband, I mean, I just don't know how he's married to a dietitian, but he bought a bag of Cheetos the other day at Wawa, and I was trying to show him that that's 700 calories in that bag of Cheetos that you just got. Because there's three servings in there, and that's not taking into account the panini that you get, or the beers you're gonna have later tonight. Um, you know, I mean, some people like him, they just have no idea, they just assume that it's one serving in that bag. All right, so pizza. 
I mean, this frozen pizza, the serving size is half a pizza, but there's two servings. So it'd be very easy to sit down and eat the whole thing. You've got to multiply it by two. Yeah. Yeah. So that's definitely not a low sodium food. Laura, is that a single serving pizza? Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's, it's not, but pizza. it would, it's yeah. Like a little exactly. Pizza. Yep. Okay. Half of it. Exactly. Like 600 Yep. Like I said, it's depressing. Ice uh, cream, a Ben and Jerry's, four now, servings in there. Now that is a single serving option. <laughs> <laughs> with you. I might have to agree with you on that one. Yeah. Uh, 23 grams of sugar if you eat the whole thing, or even half. You're getting a lot of sugar. I mean, oh my gosh, I've never seen that. So I always tell my patients, you know, measure out the serving size. So even nuts, usually it's a quarter cup or an ounce. So, you know, get a measuring cup and put it in little baggies so you have that to grab and go. If you sit down with the whole thing and a spoon, we're going to eat more than a serving size. So never eat out of the box or the bag or anything. Always measure it out. All right. So just some claims so that you know what it means when they make certain um, statements on labels. Calorie-free means that there's less than five calories per serving. So technically, it might have a couple calories in it which isn't really significant, but if you eat multiple servings, you are getting some calories. Low calories has less than 40 calories per serving. Fat-free has less than a half a gram per serving. So again, there's still a little bit in there. So that's what I was saying about the trans fat, that it says zero, but that can mean that it has 0.3 grams. So you are still getting a little bit, if it says hydrogenated um, oil on the green list. Um, low fat, less than three grams per serving. And light just means that it's either low calorie or low fat. We talked about the trans fat, no sodium, less than five milligrams per serving. So you can use herbs, other spices, pepper, Mrs. Dash to get flavor instead of using salt. I mentioned low sodium is 140 milligrams or less. Sugar free, less than half a gram per serving. So again, it's not necessarily completely sugar free. Okay, GMOs, which Shelly might help me on this. Um, so GMOs are genetically modified organisms. Basically, pr the products have had its genetic material altered. I mean, most corn and soy products are not how they were years ago. So like tomatoes, for example, this is what a tomato used to look like. Now some tomatoes look like that on the right. So why do they do it? So they can get more volume. Um, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily bad for us. I mean, there are still some contradictions out there. I think that's a personal choice if you want to eat non-GMO, if you want to eat organic. Um, someone told me this morning, correct me if I'm wrong, that you can look at the barcode on a product and if it begins with a four, it means it's GMO. And if it begins with a nine, it means it's organic, right? Four means it's organic. You didn't know that? Yeah, I didn't know it either. I learned something this morning. <laughs> Um, but if you want to eat non-GMO, eat organic, because all organic is non-GMO. So organic just means that it hasn't gotten most pesticides, the chickens or the cows aren't given growth hormones, antibiotics. You know, sometimes organic is more expensive, but you know, if that's something that's important to you, that I would never tell someone, you know, even one of my patients, not, not to eat organic. Yeah. Did you say four was GMO? Yeah. Right. That's what they told me this morning. Yeah, I, I haven't had the chance to look it up, but uh, Priscilla's saying yes, that's true. Because unfortunately, I don't think it's the laws yet. It is right. The laws. And there's that contention, but I'm not sure. It's I think the most foods are probably GMO, to be honest. I mean, I think it's hard not to get a GMO. Organic is, well, although all um, organic is non-GMO, so, I mean, I think you just have to look at the label and have, make it say organic, so that you know that it's <coughs> or look at that barcode that gives it a nice organic. Um, so organic free does not mean that it's necessarily a diet food though. So if you do have a medical condition or you're trying to lose weight, it doesn't mean that sugar free or calorie free, I mean there's organic lollipops. So I think sometimes people might justify eating more of something because it's organic. So you still have to look at the nutrition content of what you're eating. Ingredients list is an order, descending order. So whatever's listed towards the top, that's what's mostly in the product. So this product is mostly sugar. So I wouldn't recommend eating or drinking something that has that as one of the first ingredients listed. Also, I think the less ingredients, the better, because then it means it is more natural, not as many fillers and 
all that stuff. So, you know, clean eating, you know, you want to try and get things that don't have a whole lot of um, ingredients. So I know like peanut butter we were talking about this morning, the one with the oil on top is better. You know, it's just roasted peanuts and sometimes salt. Whereas, you know, the Jif or the Skippies that are still natural but don't have the oil on top, they're still better than regular peanut butter, but they do usually add molasses, um, palm oil, which is a saturated fat. Um, so, I, you know, try and choose things with the least amount of ingredients on it. And especially when you get to things that you can't pronounce, yeah. <laughs> then, you know. All right, so let's talk about the future of the nutrition label and then hopefully we'll still have time for questions. Um, so I mentioned some of these, that uh, beverages is going to more accurately reflect how many servings are in there, which we'll, we'll take a look at the new label in a minute. They're getting rid of calories from fat, which I think is relevant because, again, I don't really think it's necessarily the total fat that matters so much. If it's healthy fat, it's, it's more important what the breakdown of fat is. Again, you want it to come from monounsaturated and polyunsaturated fats, not from transunsaturated. Um, this is my favorite part, that they're going to show how much sugar is added to the pro product. I'm really excited about that. It's also going to list vitamin D and potassium, which I think is very good, especially since so many people are vitamin D deficient. Um, so this is happening by July 2018, but smaller companies that don't do as much in annual food sales, they have an extra year. And then, Tracy, remind me what you were saying about trans fat. So they already got rid of trans fat in restaurants, but by 2018, they're trying to get rid of it in all yes. stuff? All of they've, they've had like three to five years to do that. Okay. Right. So all, yes. all food you buy in the grocery store will right. supposedly by June Okay. Because trans fat is definitely the worst. It is out of most food products. Yeah. Right. Even margarine, the label is margarine at the grocery store, the, um, the ingredients have changed. Yep. Yeah, it's like palm oil, palm mm -hmm. yeah. I was looking at that the other day too, actually. Um, okay, so this shows on the left is the current label, on the right is going to be the new label. So you can see that the calories in the serving size is in bold and bigger. Yeah, wow, nice. Um, the added sugars. So this product has 12 grams of sugar and 10 are added sugar, so that's not good. So only two grams occur naturally. Um, what else is different? They've added the vitamin D and the potassium. They've gotten rid of the vitamin A and the vitamin C. Does anyone else notice any changes? What am I missing? I think that's it. Potassium rate. <laughs> What's that? The potassium. <coughs> yeah, I, yeah I, I did see the potassium. All right, so questions about any of this stuff or does anyone have comments, something that they want to add? Because I definitely learned something this morning. So if you have any other information on the labels or GMOs, organic, 